Well, the mark of the beast technology is here. This is a Pensacola News Journal from Florida saying cash will be obsolete. Only certain cards or chips will be accepted to purchase anything. And this is coming very soon. You guys have never gotten Catherine Albright's book, Spy Chips. I didn't. I forgot to bring it with me this trip. Uh, but that's a very good book. And she, she goes into the potential of the technology, what they are planning to do with it. We don't have time to discuss all that. You can bring it up during Q&A if we've got time later. Uh, but the RFID chip technology is already in use and has the capability to fulfill the Mark of the Beast prophecy. Okay? Chip heraldry is already being done. It's, very, it's, it's microscopic. You have to know exactly where to look for it on computer chips. But they are already putting their, their mark, their symbol, onto the actual computer chips themselves. I've even read that the, um, the Greek translation, the actual Greek word of mark means etching. And that's exactly how you write out a computer chip. You etch into it. Okay? Uh, this is a, coming from SpeedPass. They already use these at Walmarts and things like that, uh, where you just wave the wand and it, and it pays up for everything for you. See, now, there's an also, uh, I watched a video recently that talked about, um, a guy was talking about some of the Greek translations of worship. He says it means the, the, um, like the bowing of the head, the, the kneeling, the um, stretching forth of the hand. That is worship. Okay? If you get a mark in your hand and you stretch forth your hand to pass it over a scanner, you are worshiping the beast. If you get it in your forehead, you bend down, you go over a scanner, you are worshiping the beast. I don't know how much of that is true, but it's very interesting. If you want to research that topic, you're more than welcome to. And uh, there's a bunch of things they're going to do with these microchips and this technology where they can track your car anywhere. They've got satellites now. And I talked with one of the guys. Um, my sister used to date a guy that worked for uh, defense contracting and things like that. They've developed from satellite now. They can actually tell which specific car you have by the unique color code. Each, every specific uh, car has a unique color code, and they can tell which one you are in based on the color of your vehicle from space. It's amazing. And they can simply shoot a laser at your car and shut off your vehicle at any time. There's a, we could talk about this for hours. We just don't have time. But a central bank is what that all centered around, is doing that. Okay? Government ownership of communication and transportation. Try to fly sometime. <laughs> See what you've got to go through. They've got ownership of communication. And you folks think you own your car? No, you rent it from the government. Unless you have the manufacturer's statement of origin, you do not own your car. Okay, there's a, there's a long story behind that we don't have time to go into today. Government ownership of factories. How much time do I have left? What time are we at right now? I got 20 minutes left? Okay, I can go for five more minutes and I need to skip to the end. Government ownership of factories and agriculture. <laughs> talk, to some, talk to some local farmers. I mean, <laughs> they'll tell you what they got to go through. Okay, they own the factories, they own the agriculture. We can talk about the, you know, shutting down the railroad systems and the factories in this country. Go for a long time on that. Government control of labor. One of the most destructive things we have to our liberties in this country is the minimum wage laws. It's amazing. If you don't know how far that goes, you really need to research that one down. Corporate farms and regional planning. There again, we talked about that before. Number 10, free education for all children in public schools. Did you know the public education system? was founded by Karl Marx. It was his idea to do this, and all of it stems from the philosophy of evolution. Okay? David Rockefeller, in his memoir, said, some even believe that we are part of a secret cabal working against the best interest of the United States, characterizing my family and me as internationalists and, and of conspiring with others around the world to build a more integrated global political and economic structure, one world, if you will. If that's the charge, I stand guilty, and I am proud of it. He, he's not afraid. He knows that, how, that the people are not going to research this down to find out. He's, he's not scared of them. You need to get this book, The Committee of 300, if you haven't read John Coleman's book. This is fascinating, okay? Uh, and, or get the, the New American Magazine is talking about the conspiracies that are going on around here. Now, I'm going to try to do a word association game real quick. Um, what I'm going to do is say, the, say, the, say a word, and you guys just say out the first word that comes into your mind, okay? Let's, let's try this. Here we go. Cloud. Rain. Rain, sky, some people do. But you automatically reference those, right? Clouds are in the sky. Clouds usually, you know, it fall as rain. That's, that's logical. Okay, we'll try another one. Cow. Milk. milk. Well, that's logical. You know, we, we usually, when we go to the grocery store, most of the milk we buy is from cows most of the time. Okay? Now, I'm going to try another one. Say the first word that comes into your mind. Okay, ready? Conspiracy. What? <laughs> Where'd you get that from? <laughs> Good one. Mel Gibson. Okay. Um, but a conspiracy, by definition, it is two or more people gathered in secret to plan an evil or unlawful action. Okay? Now, has a conspiracy ever occurred in the history of the world? Has there ever been a conspiracy? Oh, there has. 
So are all conspiracies theories? No. Conspiracies actually happen. But you see, it's funny. Actually, I have tried this test on many people. The only people that don't say theory are those that don't watch television. That's inter it's interesting. Those who have not watched television, I, I'm serious. I can give you some examples. Talk to me afterwards. I'll give you some examples. But the question is, have there ever been a conspiracy in the history of, wo of the world? Of course. So are all conspiracies automatically theories? No way. Okay. In 1939, Hitler set up some German troops to attack German peoples on the borders near Poland. He blamed it on the Polish people and gave Germany an excuse to invade Poland. He needed to research the Reichstag fires and find out the conspiracies that were happening in Germany. And that's not the only place it was happening. If you think that a truck bomb in the parking lot caused concrete pillars to be sheared off at the base, you have been brainwashed and you need to get your head examined. Okay. If you think that 19 people in a cave in the Middle East can cause the world's most advanced multi-billion dollar air defense system to shut down. You've been brainwashed and you need to get your head examined, okay? We don't have time to discuss all that today. And like, when, like I was saying, uh, I was talking to a few in here earlier, that uh, the whole thing about evolution, the evolution philosophy, it's blocking from people be able, being able to see the intelligent designer. But it also blocks people's ability to be able to see the intelligent design behind conspiracy. It's a wonderful ploy by Satan because you, it blocks both, both parts. You can't know the truth and it hides himself. So it's a very dangerous philosophy we have to fight against. We can go through TWA Flight 800, we can go into JFK, we can go into World War II and Pearl Harbor and all these kind of things and what, they were actual, what was actually done to set these up. And the problem is the people are, are being blinded because they think all oh, this is just random coincidence. It's just blind chance. Oh, it's just an accident. There's no intelligent design behind it. And uh, that's, uh, again, one of the... Uh, major flaws of our country, I guess, is that philosophy of evolution that teaches that. And these are, you can look these up, you can get them on about any government website that shows these. These are the Executive Emergency Orders, 10995, says federal seizure of all communications in the media in the United States, okay? If an emergency ever happens in this country, and all they need is one big catastrophe, like the next 9-11, to put these into, into order, they're going to seize all communication. That means your cell phones, that means your computers, anything that you put communication on, anything that you can print a word on, they will seize control of it. 997 says federal seizure of all electric power, fuels, minerals, public and private. A federal seizure of all food supplies and resources. So if you, you know, you're saving up spam in your bomb shelter, they're going to come claim that too. Public and private, all farms and equipment. All means of transportation, including cars, trucks, vehicles, any kind of to uh, kind, and total control of all highways, seaports, and waterways. There's going to be no escape from these things. Federal seizure of, of American people for workforces. That means your family, your spouse, your children, under federal supervision, including the splitting up of families. Uh, federal seizure of all health, education, and welfare facilities. This church will be seized because you do education in here empowers the uh, Postmaster General to register all men, women, and children in the United States of America. Some of you have been experiencing that with the, uh, the census recently. <laughs> that's, the, that's the beginning steps. Uh, federal seizure of all airports and aircraft, public and private. Se seizure of all railroads, inland waterways, and storage facilities, both public and private. Uh, this, is the, this is the group you're going to have to watch. FEMA, complete authorization to put above orders and effect in times increased international tension of economic finance and financial crisis. FEMA will be in control in case of a national emergency. There was a story I heard about uh, down in Louisiana when they, were, when they had FEMA in there, you know, putting all this stuff up. I, I, I'm not able to verify the story. It's just something I heard. Got, they were out there with a bulldozer, and the guy was working, knocked off some branches on a tree on this guy's property, knocked some branches into his pool. And he went out there to the, one of the FEMA guys that was ahead of the thing. He says, hey, what do you think you're doing? And the FEMA guy says, who do you think you are? Do you know who I am? He says, if I tell that guy to run his bulldozer through, his, through your house, there's not a thing you can do about it. He'll do it. And the guy just went back inside of his house because the guy, I mean, these FEMA guys, they know what kind of authority they have under a national emergency, okay? And that's exactly what they do. This is Roger Nash Baldwin, founder of the uh, ACLU, the American Communist Lawyers Union. It says, my chief aversion is the system of greed, private profit and privilege and violence, which makes up the control of the world today and which has brought, to, uh, brought it to the tragic crisis of unprecedented hunger and, um, and unemployment. Therefore, I am for socialism, disarmament, and ultimately for abolishing the state itself. I seek the social ownership of property, the abolition of the pro uh, property class, and the sole control of those who produce wealth. Communism is the goal. 